put in some numbers here. It was convenient to put this to switch this to the right hand side because that's what the leading group is. You put in some numbers to make that easier. That's always a good idea. Good. All right. Well, we're doing good. Let's keep going as much as we can then. minor detail, this should be a lowercase l. Oh, yes. I guess it doesn't matter on the multiple choice test, but that should be a lowercase l so the reader knows what you're doing. That's really good. You worked that out. nitrogen leaves, it's going to gain a proton, but under acidic conditions, did you show it with two protons? It's going to gain two protons and end up positive. That's just a detail about amines. Under acidic conditions, amines end up like ammoniums. But most people, we probably won't even care about this. This is the product we were probably trying to get all along. We were probably trying to form this new carbon-carbon bond over here. So this is what we are really interested in over here. That's a little different from what we did before, but you worked that out. That's good. Now, this was not an SN2 anymore, because you can only do SN2 on sp3 carbons. But this is something we've worked on a lot. This is an attack on a carboxylic acid derivative. So it's our normal attack the carbonyl and then reform the carbonyl. Is this a reactive molecule? Uh, yes. This is at the top of the reactivity chart, so we don't need any catalysts for this step. Uh, it was very easy for this reaction to happen. So this is what we call the addition elimination reaction. Addition elimination. And you identify the L group, which is always a good idea. So now this is taking the place of the L group, and we formed a new carbon-carbon bond. So instead of adding a new alkyl group, like we would have done with an SN2, we've added a new acyl group, or alkanoyl group. So instead of calling this an alkylation, like we could do with an SN2, this is an acylation, or alkanoylation. Because remember, this type of functional group is considered an acyl group. So this is just something else that we can do with the enamine nucleophile. You remember that this carbon was nucleophilic because this lone pair tends to come down and kick off the pi bond. And then you saw how to reveal the hidden carbonyl here just by putting in this oxygen. Maybe I'll put in the stars here to show where that oxygen is coming from. Good. So we're going to do a synthesis problem. All right. We need to show how to synthesize this compound. And as a hint, one of the starting materials is an amine, and one of them is a carbonyl. So let's see if we can come up with the amine and the carbonyl that would give us this.
the story. Uh, and, um, okay, good. That looks like it came out right. Something that would uh, help be helpful to me here is just to look at the general pattern. This is the general pattern for a category four reaction. How do we know this is going to be a category four? What's the name of this functional group that we have here? An enamine. Yeah, because we have the amine on the alkene carbon. The key thing is that the amine is actually on the alkene carbon. So we know we're going to do this category four reaction. So let's see, who's the hidden car so who's the nucleophilic atom that produced this? Who's the nucleophilic atom that would have produced this? Um, the nitrogen. Right. Here's the nitrogen. So who's the former carbonyl carbon? This must have been the former carbonyl carbon. So it really helps me to put in that asterisk here to show that that is the former carbonyl carbon. Okay. And then I can simply draw but our the, 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 the general form you have there is also applicable to an aldehyde, correct? That's right. Okay. In fact, you're right. In this case, I think it really helps to show that hidden hydrogen. And we can see that this must have come from an aldehyde, because this was attached to a carbon chain and a hydrogen. So drawing in the hidden hydrogen here, I think, helps out a lot. So that's a good point. So now that really helps us to see the pattern that we're going through here. So we've got a phenyl group. Here's the asterisk carbon. Well, the asterisk carbon still has its hydrogen. But it used to be a carbonyl. And it didn't used to have this pi bond. Before it started, it didn't have the pi bond. So this pi bond over here is gone over here. I think this is exactly what you came up with. It might help to show the hidden hydrogen here. That's standard on an aldehyde. Okay. That was the only minor detail. So that's the carbonyl. And then how about the amine? Now we know that the nitrogen must have started with an extra proton, which it then uh, later lost uh, over here. So we have to make sure to keep that in over here. I think this is exactly what you came up with. That's a little harder than the problems we did before, but that's good. You worked that out. Again, as usual, it's, so the tricks that are helpful for me here is write the general pattern and then see how this matches up with the general pattern. And I agree that showing this hydrogen makes things a lot clearer over here. Now, how would you have known to even think about this on the test? You got to watch out for enamines. When you see an enamine, now, if you see an enamine as a product, you should think, gee, that was probably produced by a category four attack of a secondary amine on aldehydroketone, which is what we did here. Good. another synthesis problem. We need to start from this starting material and show how to, how to make it into this. So we need to add reagents to this. Okay. The first thing we have to do is make sure we know what this compound is. I don't think we've talked about this. So let's see if we can come up with a reasonable structure for this. But I can give you some help if you need it. Do you know what would this look like? Let's take a guess as to what that compound would look like. Seems like a good guess. What do you think the ode means? Uh, ketone. What does the fen mean? It's a uh, uh, benzoic uh, substituent. Yeah, 